Hello, hello, this is Coach Igram, and welcome to video number three for thermochemistry. This video is going to cover specific heat capacity and calorimetry. We're going to go ahead and get started with a discussion about the difference between calories and joules. The calorie is going to be the quantity of heat that's needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. It's going to be a little bit different than a food calorie. We capitalize food calorie because what it really represents is 1,000 calories, or what we'd say one kilocal. But we just go ahead and capitalize the word calorie to represent one kilocal when we're discussing food and nutrition. And one calorie, lowercase, is going to be the equivalent of 4.18 joules, which you're going to see that number pop up later. It is the specific heat of water. Heat capacity, by definition, is going to be the amount of heat that's needed to raise the temperature of an object one degree Celsius. It's going to depend on mass and composition. So, for example, if you've got a large pot of water, it's going to take more heat to heat up that pot of water to the same temperature than it would to heat up a very small pot of water. All right. Specific heat capacity is going to be the amount of energy that it's going to take to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one degree Celsius, at constant pressure. And it's going to be calculated with this equation right here. And you might recognize that as a rearranged version of this, which we have used before in this course. This equation here on the right is simply rearranged to reflect specific heat capacity and the relationship of all the other variables to it. The specific heat units are going to be calorie over grams times degrees Celsius or joules over grams times degrees Celsius. And those units are going to give you the units for all the other variables when you plug them into your equation. Water, for example, has a very high specific heat capacity compared to other substances. And you're going to be given a table of these values if you need them. To calculate the heat required to change a substance's temperature, we're going to use this equation, which you should recognize. Q is going to be our heat absorbed or released. Remember, if it's absorbed, our Q value will end up being a positive number. And if it's released, Q will end up being a negative number. And this can be in either joules or calories. Our mass is going to be in grams. Our specific heat will be in one of the two units that we had previously discussed on the last slide. And our change in temperature is going to be in degrees Celsius. And recall that that's going to be change in temperature equals T final minus T initial. OK, let's go ahead and solve a problem using this equation. So this problem says how much heat is absorbed by 500 grams of water as its temperature is increased from 14.0 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius. And the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we know the specific heat capacity of water. And it is on this little pullout right here. It's going to be 4.18 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. We are going to go ahead and use that. So our Q value, oops, get a pen. Our Q value, we don't know. Our mass is going to be 500 grams. Our C value is going to be 4.18. And our change in temperature is going to be T final minus T initial. In this case, 75.0 minus 14.0, which is going to give us 61.0. And remember, you're doing addition and subtraction in this case, so your significant figures rules apply to that little piece of addition and subtraction before you plug it into your overall equation. And when we do go ahead and plug it in, don't know Q, 500 times 4.18 times 61.0. So then when we go ahead and calculate it out, I got 127,490. But I've got to use significant figures rules. There can only be three, so that's going to end up being 127,000 with no decimal, and that's going to be um, joules over grams times degrees Celsius. Oh, shoot. But remember, you have to follow significant figures rules. So it's going to end up being 127,000. 
with no decimal, and that's going to be in joules. Note that it's a positive number, so this is an endothermic reaction. Okay, our next example, I'm going to go ahead and pause it and let you work it out, and when you're done, unpause, and I will work it out so you can check your work. All right, let's go ahead and go through this problem. <clears throat> Okay, let's go ahead and work this problem. So it states that if I've got 5,750 joules of energy, that means my Q value is going to be 5,750. It's going to be added to a 455 gram piece. So my mass is going to be 455. And I know that my initial temperature is going to be 24.0 degrees Celsius, and I'm looking for my final temperature. C value is going to be 0 0.840. And my change in temperature. We don't know it yet, but we know that it's going to be T final minus 24.0. And you can either plug this little piece right here into the equation, or you can solve for change in temperature overall, and then later do the subtraction to figure out your TF. It is completely up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and plug everything in. So I've got Q equals, oop, MCAT, there we go, 5, 7, 5, 6, 4, 5, I'm going to go ahead and rearrange that equation, solve for TF, and I'm going to get T final to be 39.0 degrees Celsius. All right, the next piece that we're going to talk about is calorimetry. And calorimetry is going to be the accurate and precise measurement of heat change for a chemical process. Calorimetry is going to be based on the below. So for every single problem that we're going to discuss, the heat lost by the system is going to be the same as the heat gained by the system. To write that mathematically, the Q lost by the system is going to be equivalent to the Q gained by the calorimeter. So if I'm going to put that in terms of this equation that we've used now, if Q is equal to Q, then that means that this piece of it, the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature, is going to be equal to the mass times the specific heat capacity times the temperature. Remember that Q lost by the system, though, is going to be negative. So you either have to take the absolute value of your temperature or you have to make this entire side of the piece negative to reinforce the fact that one of the Qs will be exothermic. It has lost the heat, and the other one is going to gain that exact same heat. And in order for this process to be accurate and precise, it generally needs to be carried out in a calorimeter, which we're going to talk about in the next slide. So when we're doing these problems, constant volume, or bomb calorimetry, is going to be allowing the reaction to take place inside an enclosed container. Oopsies, sorry. Right here, which you can see. And it's going to be surrounded by water. And essentially what happens is it measures the temperature change of the water. And the bomb is going to absorb some energy. So its heat capacity has to be considered. But for the most part, it keeps the heat that's transferred between the system and the surroundings so that you can accurately measure the heat transferred and your Q value. Constant pressure, or coffee cup calorimetry, allows the reaction to take place inside an insulated container that is not sealed. This is also going to measure the temperature change of the water, but the cups are open to the surroundings, so heat can be lost in any gases that are going to escape the cup. Oops, too far. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and practice a problem here. It says that I've got a 25-gram sample of a metal at 75 degrees Celsius, and it's placed in a calorimeter containing 45.0 grams of water at 23 degrees Celsius. The temperature stops changing at 29.4, so remember that's going to be the final temperature for both pieces. What is the specific heat of the metal? So I've got Q equals M cat. I'm going to write it like this. Q equals M cat equals. And I'm going to go ahead and assume that this left-hand side is my metal, and I'm going to make it negative because it's going to be the one losing the heat since it clearly starts at 75 degrees Celsius and lowers down to 29.4. So the mass of my metal is going to be 25.0. The specific heat, we do not know. 
<coughs> my change in temperature is going to be 29.4 minus 75. And so that's going to end up being a negative number. But that's okay because we've got a negative over here on the left hand side. So it's going to work out. And then on the right hand side, we know we've got 45.0 grams of water. The specific heat capacity of water is 4.18, as given above. And my change in temperature in this case is 29.4 minus 23.0. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for C. And C is going to end up being, and this is just basic algebra, C is going to end up being 1.06 joules over grams times degrees Celsius. All right, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can work this problem all by yourself. And when you're done, unpause and I will work it through with you. Okay, let's go ahead and look at what we've got here. We've got a 88.5 grams of substance A. It's going to be heated to an unknown temperature. So that's clearly what we're going to be solving for in our calorimetry problem. And it's going to be dropped into 2,500 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the water is going to rise from 25 to 70 degrees Celsius. And we're going to look again for the original temperature of substance A. And note that we have both of our specific heat capacity values below for both the water and our unknown A. So I'm going to get started with Q equals MCAT. And I've got MCAT equals MCAT here because we've got calorimetry. And I'm noticing that since my water is rising from 25.0 to 70, that means it's going to be gaining heat. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that my metal or my unknown substance is going to be losing heat. So I'm going to make that negative on the right-hand side of the equation. So now I'm just going to plug everything in. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to go with my water. We've got 2,500 grams. My heat capacity for water is 4.18. My temperature is going to be 70.0 minus 25.0. Note the significant figures there. And then on the right-hand side, I've got my mass, which is 88.5 of my metal, my specific heat capacity, which is 1.20, and my temperature, which I do not know, but I know my final temperature, so it's going to be 70.0 minus T initial. So I'm going to be rearranging this equation, equation using algebra 1 to solve for T initial. And if you go ahead and rearrange and multiply the left-hand side, it's going to be 470250 on this side. And I got that equal to negative 106.2 times 70.0 minus TI. Go ahead and divide both sides by 106.2, and I'm going to get negative 4427.7 on this side equals 70.0 minus T initial. Solve for T initial, and then negatives will uh, uh, cancel each other out. And I get T initial is going to be 4497.97. Now I have to have three significant figures here. So in order to do that, once I round, I'm going to have to put in the scientific notation of uh, three significant figures. So I'm going to end up with 4.50 times 10 to the third. And it is the original temperature, so that's going to be in degrees Celsius for my unit. All right. Hopefully you took good notes. Come to class with questions and let us know what you didn't understand. Thanks.